What's up, math fans? Today, I want to talk about uh, how to find an angle formed by two secants. All right, there's a lot to do with circles, I know, and you have to be able to know what you're looking at and figure out what formula to use. But there is a theme. So generally, these are the circles that you look at, and these are the different things that could happen in a circle. You could either have two tans, two secants, uh, one tangent and one secant, two chords, or even a tangent and a chord. And there's different formulas for all of them. Now there's a bunch of videos that I've already done on finding the lengths of either the tangent or the secant or whatever. Those are different formulas for lengths. Lengths is like distance. Here, we're talking about angle measure in degrees. So it's completely different formulas, different conversation. Um, but the theme all stems from this diagram that hopefully you learned a long time ago. When you have an inscribed angle, what is the formula for finding the measure of that angle? By the way, this little thing inside just means theta or the unknown angle. So my formula is theta equals one half arc AB. That's it. Arc AB is the intercepted arc. What do I mean by intercepted? I used to call that the pizza slice. I start from my angle, I, from C, I follow it all the way out, it hits B, it hits A, excuse me, and then I follow it all the way out here, it hits B. So that's what I mean by intercepted, it's where it kind of reaches the circle. So if I highlight that, that's the pizza crust. That's where it gets inter that's where the circle gets intercepted. So let's say this was 80 degrees, then the angle is one half of 80, which is 40. So that theme of one half holds true for all the diagrams. If the angle is outside, it is uh, one half the difference of the intercepted arcs. If it's inside, it's actually one half the sum of the intercepted arcs, but it's generally one half. All right, keep that in mind. And instead of saying one half, you can just divide by two at the end. So here's my formula. The angle theta here, which is outside, exterior angle theta, formed by two secants, two secants, is equal to one half the intercepted arcs. So here, if I follow angle A all the way out, it reaches this arc CE. If I follow it just to when it first hits the circle, that's arc BD. So that's big arc, that's little arc. Some people might say major and minor. I don't want to say major arc and minor arc, because generally when I discuss major arc and minor arc, they combine to make a full circle. This is only part of the circle. So I'm just going to say big and little. Big intercepted arc, little intercepted arc, excuse me. So that's one half what? CE, arc CE minus arc BD. And I don't really like to teach formulas, again, because the letters always change. So just remember, big minus little divide by 2. Theta equals big, 100 degrees, minus little, 30 degrees, divide by 2. Instead of saying 1 half, I just say divide by 2. That's actually easier for me. So that's 70 divided by 2, which is 35 degrees, and you are done. Most questions are pretty straightforward, simple as that. Big minus little, divide by two, you're done. So, cool, thanks, you get the idea. Here's a much more complicated one. What if they give you the angle and then they give you some nonsense with an X? Well, is the formula still the same? Big minus little, divide by two. So instead of saying theta, I know theta is 50, so I'm gonna say 50 equals big, in fact, just for fun, I like to highlight my stuff. Um, so here, that's the big intercepted arc, and here is the little intercepted arc. That's pretty clear in this diagram. Sometimes they make it a little messy on purpose, where you have to know that the whole thing is 360 and maybe you have to find a, a missing arc first, but here I'm given. So big minus little, 3x minus 2, all divided by 2. The angle is equal to big minus little divided by two. And here's an annoying trick. Um, it's the entire big arc minus the entire little arc. So you actually have to use your knowledge of subtraction. Um, so I'm doing what? 5x minus 3x. So that is 2x. And then I'm doing uh, 18 minus negative two. 18 minus negative two, if you keep change change, it's actually 18 plus two, which comes out to be positive 20. So 50 equals 2x plus 20 over 2. If you remember anything about proportions, you 
put this over one, and you cross multiply. So this way gives me 100, this way gives me 2x plus 20, so that equals 100. Subtract 20 on both sides, 2x equals 80, divide by, I don't know if you can see this, hopefully you can, divide by 2, and I got x alone, x equals 40. Um, so basically the theme is play around with the algebra, you get different combinations, but big minus little divide by 2. Alright, thanks for watching, see ya.